Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, just at the outset, it has been done by other speakers today, just to um, convey sympathy to um, the families of all those um, who passed away in the nursing home setting um, at, at this time, and to acknowledge the trauma for families, but equally so for uh, nursing home staff. But, and the focus today is very much so on COVID-19 and um, how that has hit the nursing homes, but equally so in the interest of balance, we must acknowledge that there were many, many nursing homes that remained um, free of, of, of COVID. And I think in the interest of balance, it's hugely important that we would remember that in this d debate. And equally so, um, the nursing homes that uh, were hit uh, by COVID-19, you know, it, it wasn't just peculiar or particular to nursing homes, it's what we're living with currently. And I, I think there needs to be balance in, in, in the whole discussion. Um, I think Deputy Butler put it uh, superbly when she acknowledged that in any crisis and in any situation the measure really will be what we learn from it and um, so in, in, in that respect I, I would like to point to the fact that there was quite an amount of um, confusion and lack of clarity at the outset really as to how things were operating within the nursing homes um, patients were being told or uh, nursing homes were told that patients were to uh, remain in nursing homes and not be transferred uh, to hospitals and yet at the same time on the other hand um, patients were being discharged from hospital and brought to nursing nursing home settings without testing and you know all of that uh, con confusion um, did not help the situation. Equally so I suppose on April the 14th the HSE as my understanding informed HICWA that due to difficulties in sourcing PPE it would not be possible to, to provide the, the three day baseline for PPE as promised and PPE would be directed to areas of what they was termed greatest risk. Um, but on that particular date, um, April 14th, um, the number of clusters in nursing homes had risen to 158. So just to acknowledge okay, that the, the, there was a whole litany of confusion and lack of clarity. But going forward, because we must go forward, in relation to PPE, and I had discussed this with a number of, of nursing homes in my own constituency, is there an ongoing commitment from HSC to provide uh, PPE going forward, or is there actually a cut-off date for that, if, if, if that could be answered? Um, D D Deputy, uh, the HSE is, is committed to, to providing PPE, and I think as the CEO has said, he probably said it at this committee last week, uh, uh, we're looking at a, a probable uh, total commitment over a 12-month period of in excess of a billion euros across all sectors, uh, and to date, uh, 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 across private nursing homes, uh, the HSC has provided in around 27 million euros worth of PPE and millions of items. So, uh, uh, at this point in time, there's no suggestion whatsoever uh, that that is going to cease. If anything, uh, as uh, uh, as more need is identified, it is met. Uh, and uh, that being said, at the same time, in discussions with Nursing Homes Ireland, uh, we have encouraged uh, uh, them to continue to explore their own sources because more is better. Uh, and uh, um, until such time as not only can we meet demand, but we can actually begin to accumulate stock to provide a buffer. Uh, then I don't think any of us will be satisfied in relation to the overall position. Thank you. Yeah, I, I welcome that. Um, could I uh, raise with you a point as well that was raised with me by a number of, of nursing homes that currently the position is if a patient has to be uh, transferred to hospital for a minor procedure, uh, it may well be an X-ray, it could be a cardiac, you know, a, a pacemaker check, defibrillator check, or whatever. That it's my understanding that on return to the nursing home, even though they might only have been on, on, on hospital campus for an hour, two hours that they are expected to go into 14-day isolation um, and that is adding considerable trauma for the individual and obviously for families and for the nursing home. And is there not, you know, and nursing homes are now making the decision what, what is most urgent so that people might attend hospital or not attend hospital. Is there a better way of doing things going forward? Is it, is it possible that services might be available on campus at nursing home site um, rather than having to, um, to, go, to go to the hospital? Is there an opportunity for learning there? 
Yes, I mean, there's a, um, there is guidance actually being revisited around all of that uh, as we speak to give clarity. And, uh, you know, as somebody who's been working in the sector for a, a number of years and very well aware of, you know, how people are trying to balance those risks, we are trying to issue all guidance in terms of what care can be delivered when and by whom uh, in as responsive a way as possible. And I think it's important to, to reiterate that. Uh, I do think, um, you know, in terms of those kind of short term visits that you're talking about, uh, certainly the feeling is that anything that takes, you know, uh, that can be done in a short period does not require that isolation afterwards. But again, I think it's important that people understand, I suppose, the, the role that asymptomatic transmission and the potential for asymptomatic transmission uh, plays in this. So clearly, people who need overnight stays or, or may have uh, more more prolonged stays will will require uh, isolation on transfer back. So all you know that that um, uh, you know will all be addressed. I think it's it's very important. I suppose that everything that's actually happening is being monitored on a very close basis by um, uh, colleagues here. I think there are massive issues and they've been highlighted by your own colleagues in terms of the discussion here around governance and resilience and how they are actually going to be managed out uh, in terms of, of, of the ongoing risk of transmission and the ongoing risk to nursing homes. So as a clinician, I'm very live to it. I think uh, most people here are very live to it. Uh, and unless there's actually some systemic, I suppose, um, uh, addressing of some of the issues that have been highlighted uh, throughout the discussion here, uh, they will pose to be, they will continue to, to pose to be a challenge. Can I ask one very quick question, and that's about the turnaround for testing of staff, um, uh, staff in nursing homes. That, that has proved quite problematic as well. So just, just to raise that and to flag that with you. Very quickly, uh, uh, I, I can answer that. Uh, uh, I think when we started uh, uh, large-scale testing in uh, nursing homes, turnaround times were not where they needed to be. I think that has improved week on week, uh, and there's still some improvement uh, to be got. I think the GP referrals are now working very, very well, uh, and you know we, we need the same turnaround in relation to uh, any, you know, nursing home or any employment-related testing. Yeah.